Hudson Taylor, the founder of the China Inland Mission. He laboured for some 51 years as a missionary in China, once said that the Great Commission is not an option to be considered, but it is a command to be obeyed. The Mission Board itself now oversees the ministry of some 20 different missionaries, their wives and their families, both on the home field and abroad. We realise that this is a mammoth task for such a small denomination. We would appeal to the Lord's people to be fervent in their prayerful support and to be generous in their financial giving as we seek to maintain the cause of the gospel through our missionary endeavour both on the home and the foreign mission field. It is my joy as chairman to introduce our missionaries who serve God under our mission board, both at home and abroad. The Word of God reminds us and instructs us of the importance of teaching the Word of God to our boys and girls. Unfortunately, many of our boys and girls these days do not attend Sunday school or a children's meeting. So therefore, I thank the Lord for the door that is opened into many of our primary schools to present the Word of God to the boys and girls. During the summer months, many children hear the gospel by way of holiday Bible clubs, outdoor meetings, and in camps. The very sad statistics tell us that even children as young as 11, 12, 13, and 14 are heavily involved in alcohol and in drugs. And so therefore, we need to reach this rising generation with the gospel of Christ. We need you to pray that God will bless the seed that is sown in young hearts and lives. This year is our seventh year working for the Mission Board as a full-time child evangelist and youth worker. Again, it's been our privilege to go into many schools and to bring the gospel to many boys and girls, which would have never heard. We do covet your prayers for this work, and we do thank you for your faithful giving, for which the work would not be able to continue. Do you please remember us in the summer with our holiday Bible clubs, our children's camps and youth work. Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for all your prayers and your support. I would ask you please to continue to remember the ministry to the addicted in prayer. Pray for the individuals that we work with who are bound and fettered and chained in sin. Praise God we have the answer. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I would ask you please to also pray for their families and those who are affected by drugs and by addiction. Pray that the Lord will be glorified through the salvation of precious souls. We've been two years under the mission board, reaching out with the gospel to young people, and we're thankful to the Lord for leading us. We're continuing to build on contacts that we've made with teachers and schools, and we would ask you to pray that the Lord would open up more opportunities to speak in scripture unions, and assemblies, and in RE classes and personal development classes. We would also ask you to pray with us as we labour alongside the Youth Council and pray that the Lord would help us as we help to disciple young people and seek to encourage young people into evangelism. As a family we would just like to thank you for your prayerful support and your financial support and we would ask you to continue to pray for all of the work that the Lord would lead us into. For almost 30 years now, I've had the privilege of sharing the gospel with the people in the south of Ireland. This involves uh, preaching the gospel right across Ireland, as well as knocking on doors and speaking face to face with many people. This work is not without its challenges, but it's a tremendous privilege to bring the gospel to many Irish hearts. I'd like to thank you for your faithful support and to encourage you to continue to pray for us in the Lord's work. During the last two years, we have known much of the blessing of the Lord in our work here in Alcorcón, with the result that our membership has greatly increased, leaving us with a problem, being able to seat the people, thus the need to extend our building. We are also praying and working to commence a new work in the city of Toledo. Three of our church families live near the city and are helping in this work. We take the opportunity to thank the Lord for you all and for your prayers and financial support to us down through the years. We 
It's been 14 years since my ordination to the ministry in the Church of Alcorcón, and we can say to the glory of the Lord that we are enjoying His blessings as never before, with more people coming to the services and also new members. We can see for example this increase in the different Sunday school classes. When I think of the work in Spain, I remember those words of the Lord when He said, The harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. We give thanks to the Lord for His hand upon us over these last 30 years. We do appreciate God's people for holding the ropes at home and praying for us. And we indeed would ask you to pray on for our small congregation and for the work here that the Lord will continue to bless and that we'll see many more delivered from this awful system of Rome. Although it has lost much of its power, we see that many people are still held in their local traditions and fiestas. Pray for people that indeed the Lord would richly bless them as they try and reach their own family and bring in friends and neighbours. Greetings from Kapanguria, Kenya. We're thankful to the Lord for all the opportunities he continues to give us in the work of the gospel here in this land. I would ask you to continue to pray for the academy. We're thankful for all the students that we have. And I would ask you to pray particularly during this transitional period when Noreen relocates across to Uganda. It still has many needs. Do remember them, the financial needs, the academic needs, and the spiritual needs. Pray for the souls of the students that many will come to Christ this year. Remember also the work of the Sunday schools that I'm involved in. Pray particularly for the teachers as they go out every Lord's Day, that they would know renewed strength and burden of heart for the souls of the children. Pray also for those who oversee this work. During the past three months, we have been endeavouring to encourage the church in Yapura, Western Kenya. We usually travel there for the services two weeks out of three. On the Lord's Day morning, we have continued with a series of messages from Paul's letter to the Galatians. On a Monday morning, visitation of the congregation and homes in the area surrounding the church is usually conducted. And then in the afternoon, we have a Bible study following with a time of prayer. On a Tuesday, a lunchtime Bible study is held in the bookshop in Kakamega, which I share with Kathy Walker. Translation work continues. Programs are continuing to be broadcast on the Mani Radio and the Must FM. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you all sincerely for praying for Alison and I. Greetings from Western Kenya, where Beulah Bookshop is now a year and a half into its ministry to the people of Kakamega and the surrounding areas, through the provision of literature and also through a Bible study held weekly in the bookshop. We thank the Lord for all that He has done, and we look for even greater things in the coming days. Pray especially for a pastor's conference planned for the beginning of May, Pray that many pastors will come out and that through the teaching and preaching of the Word of God, their hearts will be encouraged and enlightened. We trust that this will be just the beginning of a pastoral training ministry which is so vitally needed here in this area of Kenya. Hello folks, thanks for your prayers and support over another year. I've been working mostly with the children and I ask you to pray that the Lord will save some of the children who have been with us now for the past five years. Pray also that um, other missionaries will come to help us here. Just to update you, we were able to finish the construction in the second mission board house last summer and funds have been raised for the first of two land cruisers that are desperately needed here and that first vehicle should arrive uh, in April. The big news at the moment is that the government has granted us a frequency for our own radio station under the NGO and we are praying that soon we'll be broadcasting here from Dwazon on 92.5 FM. We have already purchased a 150 foot radio tower and we are currently raising funds for a transmitter and antenna. Thank you. The Lord has opened for us a door of opportunity in Uganda. There is the potential through the work of the mission station here in central Uganda to reach many needy souls with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pray that the children of Emmanuel Christian School will be found by the Good Shepherd and then sent out by him to draw others into his fold. Pray also that the church will be a living witness to the Lord Jesus 
in a spiritually dark and needy area. Greetings to you all this Easter season and thank you for your prayers and continued financial support of me and the work of God in Kenya and Uganda. As I take my leave of BCFC Christian Academy for Emmanuel Christian School, I trust that you will remember me, my missionary colleagues past and present, the local believers and the children whom we serve. Pray that God would endure each of us with power from on high and that our lives and ministries would bring glory to him. Pray also that our children and young people would grow up to know and serve Christ and to live for him so that together we may shine as lights in a dark place. Hello and greetings from Tasmania. As you remember us in prayer at this time, we would ask you to remember in particular our various forms of outreach into the community, our children's work and Sunday school, our proposed visit from the moderator later in the year, and also our special Reformation meetings to be held at various times over the next number of months. Thank you and God bless. Greetings to you all. I want to thank you for your prayers for us as we labour for the Lord here in Perth in Australia. Our congregation appreciate all the interest you take in the work. We encourage you to continue praying that the Lord will bless our ministry in the city centre. It is a great encouragement that we have the opportunity to preach God's word from week to week and to see copies of God's word being taken as well as other gospel literature. Hello from Port Lincoln and Lock in South Australia and thank you for your prayers for us. Despite what is a general apathy to religion in this region, yet the Lord has encouraged us, particularly through two new families that have been attending in Port Lincoln. Please pray that similar encouragements might be known in Lock as well. Gospel material continues to be distributed through the post service on a regular basis and at the local agricultural shows, so pray that the Lord would use this for his glory. We are encouraged in Nepal with two young people, Sarita and Isaac, who desire to become medical missionaries. Sarita has just begun her five-year medical course. If Isaac qualifies, he will begin his studies next year. Such courses are expensive, and so we intend, as the Lord provides, to finance their studies. Could you help in this matter? You certainly can pray as they prepare themselves to reach the villages of Nepal. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the past few months we have been going around our province on deputation meetings. Please remember to pray for the language. Pray that the Lord will continue to help me to see the symbols and recognise them for letters, but also when I arrive in the country to give me that tongue to speak and that ear to hear that I will soon be able to converse with the people. Also remember our visa, we can go for a five month uh, tourist visa, but then we will need to have a work visa. So pray as we set up the English Academy that all the paperwork and the application can be done that will allow us to go and to stay for longer periods of time in the land. Also remember the boys and girls, pray that the Lord will open their eyes to the truth, that they will come to know Jesus as their own and personal saviour. Remember them as they settle into a new home in the new orphanage. We have been amazed how the Lord has touched the hearts of the people for the need of this new orphanage. Pray for the Reverend Thapa as he continues to lead the work there. Have you been challenged as you've listened to this missionary presentation? We trust that you have and that you've felt the burden again in your heart for the work of the Great Commission. Jesus says, lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest. May the Lord enable us to pray, pray earnestly for our missionary endeavor and to support our missionaries all we can. Remember the famous words of the pioneer missionary C.T. Studd, if Jesus Christ be God and died for me, then no sacrifice is too great for me to make for him. Where he 